In this video tutorial we'll be looking at elastic plastic analysis of a, a thick cylinder. So we'll start by creating a geometry for this and that's done under preprocessor in mechanical APDL. We can first start by adding our element type. This is going to be a, a two-dimensional solid with a quad four node 182 element so we can use that basic element or the alternative is the 8 node 183 element which is the higher order version so let's start with that and the option for that element is that we want to use the plane strain option and that's fine for that element we need to define a material model so our material will be um, elastic plastic but this is first defining the elastic portion which is 200 gigapascals Young's modulus and 0.3 Poisson ratio and we need to define the inelastic portion as well and that is going to be rate independent kinematic hardening and Mrs. plasticity bilinear with a yield stress of 300 megapascals and a small tangent modulus, let's say 10. So that's our material model defined. We need to create the geometry through a few key points. So to create the key points we can specify a key point 1 at the Cartesian coordinate system 0, 0, 0, key point 2 at x equals 100 nanometers, key point 3, x equals 200 nanometers, key point 4, y equals 200, and key point 5, y equals 100. So we can specify two arcs and an area based on this. To create arcs we can use um, the end key points and radius option. So the start and end key points are these and this is the point on the curvature side and we need to specify the radius as 100 so that's our first arc we can do the same for the outside surface of the vessel and this is the center point and this time the radius is going to be 200 and press OK and we can create a couple of straight lines from these two points and these two points as well and then define an area based on lines so you can click on these four lines and that specifies our area so that's our geometry completed we can go to uh, creating the mesh for this um, what we want to use is a mesh tool and it's possible to do a smart size and then um, mesh this arbitrarily but for uh, basic geometry like this it's straightforward to create a quad mapped mesh so we simply need to specify the size of these elements let's say 10 millimeters and then mesh this area with quad elements so this is a nice straightforward mesh Typically you may want to grade the mesh so that you have smaller elements on the inside radius where you'll have the higher uh, stress gradients. Okay, our meshing is complete. We can go to the solution. And in the solution, first we need to specify some displacements. So this is our symmetry line. And on that line, we need to fix the displacements in the y direction and also on this line we need to fix the displacements on the 
X direction. And the next load is the pressure on the inside surface. So the first pressure we're going to apply is just a unit load. And we'll look at the stress due to that. So we can solve this for this particular load step and look at the results. So this will be an elastic solution because we haven't stressed the material to its um, plastic limits yet. So we can look at results by pick. So there's only one load set there and it's at time 1 and for a pressure of 1. So plot results, nodal solution and if we choose the von Mises stress we can see that on the inside surface the maximum von Mises stress is 2.3 megapascals. That was for a pressure value of 1 megapascals. And to find what is the elastic limit of this vessel, if the vessel yield strength is 300 megapascals, then to go from 2.3 to 300, you can scale the load up and find out what pressure we need to apply. So if we do the calculation using uh, our calculator 300 divided by 2.3 uh, gives us about 130 megapascals. So if we go back and then change our load on that line to 130 megapascals the stresses we should get should be just about at the limit load of this vessel in terms of elasticity. So we can solve this again. Look at the results in the post processor. So we can see that the stresses are just at 299.66 megapascals on the inside surface. So this is the von Mises stress on the inside surface. So what we can create now is a basic log file which can store all the commands that we have entered so far. So on this log file I have entered the preprocessor, created the element type plane 182 or 183 and specified the option as plain strain and define the material properties and define the geometry with key points, arcs and areas and then created the mesh. So all this bit is about creating the geometry and meshing and the next part is required to specify the loads in steps. So in the solution we are asking all the results to be written out to the results file and we fix the two lines for the symmetric conditions then apply the unit load solve for that and we can apply for a pressure let's say 130 and we may, can make the time um, coincident with the applied pressure so that we can say uh, when we look at the time uh, that is related to the pressure value or any other force value uh, to make it easier to interpret the results. And we can add a couple of other load steps. So in this case I'm putting the pressure up to 200 megapascals and then uh, near its plastic limit 220 megapascals and then unloading it to 0 megapascals. So we can rerun all of this by simply selecting the commands and inputting on the input window so we can see the results in the general post processor 
check the nodal solution. The phone me says at 300, so that's the at end of the time step. We can read the result by peg and then 130 read and plot the results nodal solution for Mises and we can see that that's 299.66 megapascals for 130 um, megapascals load now we can look at the results at other um, time steps we can see that in this log file I've created after the initial unit load and the elastic limit load I've created another step for 200 megapascals, another step for 220 and after 220 um, I have unloaded the pressure to zero so at 300 time the pressure is zero at time 220 the wall of this vessel is partially yielded so we can read the results by peg we can check what that looks like at 220 the plot the results for nodal stresses you can see that almost uh, more than half of the wall of this vessel has been yielded another couple of interesting plots we can generate is to look at the plastic strains so the equivalent plastic strain for example shows how much plasticity has been spreading through the wall of this vessel and we can look at um, another way of seeing um, how these stresses changed for example the first principal stress let's plot this and then try to animate it over time so over time we can create let's say 30 frames for time ranging from 0 to 300 and let's make the animation time delay 0 0.1 and let's plot this so this is the first principle stress and we can also do the same animation for the um, von Mises stress to see how that is spreading on the wall of this vessel so if you do animate over time and again 0 to 300 in um, 30 frames so plasticity is starting around about here uh, so stress is just going over 300 and then it's unloading and then creating uh, compressive stresses